We're going to go through the, the basics and the philosophy and uh, the science of uh, bioidentical hormones. And tomorrow, I'll try to put it all together with the last presentation, which is called Nuts and Bolts. I think that's so important because for those of you who haven't studied bioidentical hormones much, you want to be able to start prescribing these safely and appropriately with the best effects on Monday morning. So we'll talk about all this over the next two days, but the last hour will be here's the hormone controversies, doses, testing, and how you do it. So hopefully it'll all come together in that way. So let's enter a uh, world of paradigm shifts, a new way of looking at the universe. And in this advanced medicine that we're practicing, we've got to leave behind some old myths and prejudices and actually examine the scientific evidence and see what's for real. Aging is a disease which can be prevented or reversed or at least moderated. So we're actually, this is a seminar in anti-aging medicine. We're modifying the aging process. Can you do this? Without a doubt. I've been practicing anti-aging medicine for over 12 years now, and I see examples of anti-aging. People getting physiologically younger, from cardiovascular status to cognitive status to just enjoying life. So yes, this can be done to a certain extent. And we're not prisoners of our genetic destiny, and so if you're programmed to have an MI on your 50th birthday, you don't have to go there. You can change the interaction of your genes and the environment. We're going to talk a lot about inflammation, and so many of the seminars you go to at this uh, course will deal with inflammation, because that is the theme song now. That's the common thread in illness. Anti-inflammation, wellness, chronic inflammation, illness. So each hormone, let's see what is the effect of that hormone treatment, that hormone optimization on inflammation. And we could look at C-reactive protein, or we could look upstream at the cytokines that turn on C-reactive protein, IL-6, TNF-alpha, IL-1 beta. We're going to hear about those over and over again. Balanced hormone optimization. They all interact with each other, decreases chronic inflammation. You're going to see the science behind that, and you're going to prove that as you treat your patients. More paradigm shifts. Um, we age because our hormones decline. I mean, that's one of the multifactorial causes of aging. You know, any time, to me at least, when there's one theory that this is everything, this explains it all, it seems simplistic. It's a multifactorial process. So one of the factors in falling apart with time or aging is hormone decline. Are the paradigm shifts. When you treat deficiencies such as adult growth hormone deficiency or adult testosterone deficiency, these are therapies that can prevent and reverse some aspects of aging. And we'll spend considerable time on testosterone replacement therapy showing that it's safe and the benefits can be dramatic in both men and women. Um, Bioidentical estrogens and progesterone replacement is safe and again can have dramatic benefits. What should be obvious, of course, is that progestins are not progesterone. That's where all the problems with the idea that bioidentical hormone replacement in women is dangerous. It's the progestin. And of course, equine estrogens aren't human. Oral estrogens aren't transdermal. Oral estrogens are inflammatory. Our goal, take care of chronic inflammation. Any oral estrogens will be working against this. We'll talk about E3 as a weak estrogen and a protective estro estrogen. And when we discuss thyroid, people with euthyroid values may not be in the best place. They may be clinically hypothyroid. Um, we're going to operate in the big middle zone. You know, we were taught in medical school, there's Addison's disease, there's Cushing's disease, everyone else in the middle is normal. You're hyperthyroid, hypothyroid, everyone else is normal. But the action, the excitement, the benefit to your patients is in this vast middle zone. This is where we operate most of the time in treating bioidentical hormone deficiencies. Example, adrenal fatigue. What is that? That's relatively mild adrenal insufficiency. Does mild hypothyroidism need to be treated? It certainly does. Does mild growth hormone deficiency need to be treated? It can produce benefits. 
So again, when we treat with hormones, we're not just throwing them at patients, we're diagnosing a deficiency disease. And our goals are to improve quality of life. Of course, that's what everybody wants. If you get some quantity of life well with it, that's even better. We'll document that we're decreasing inflammation. And we'll examine the medical literature showing that our interventions do not increase cancer risks, do not increase heart disease risks, just the opposite. But again, it's a matter of personal choice. First part of the interaction with the patient is to find out where is his or her comfort zone? What do you want to do? So it's not something that where the doctor on high talking down to the patient, we're working with whatever their comfort zone is. The root of hormone application is important. And it's all a work in progress. As we develop more data, we should be ready to change what we're doing. I mean, that's one of the criticisms we make of other generations. Gee, they're not incorporating the current data. Well, let's be aware of this ourselves. So bioidentical hormone optimization is a clinical specialty, cl underlining clinical. Again, we have to throw out the idea of reference ranges. That's not the optimal range. That may not be the best place to be. And as a clinician, when lab and the patient don't agree, I'm going to vote for the patient. It's a clinical specialty. The lab should be used to help confirm your diagnosis, but not really make the diagnosis. So stepping back, why, why do our hormone levels decline? What's the evolutionary biology? It's sometimes said that, well, maybe there's some kind of benefit in having your hormones go to zero. Maybe it protects you from cancer as you get older. Well, if you think about the biology of it, animals either reproduce or they don't. They'll replicate their DNA or not. Events that take place after reproductive age, evolution is blind to. So how could it help an, an animal have more offspring by shutting off the hormones after reproductive age? doesn't make sense. 